Hey, what's up guys? Going over uh, my rifle, just basic components and why I chose to use the things that I placed on my rifle when I put it together. So, uh, to try to keep it simple, I will go from back to front and then we'll discuss the stuff up here in the front, the accoutrements and attachments and things I swap out depending on a uh, scenario. So, from back to front, going with the KRG uh, C4. Uh, I upgraded from the Whiskey 3 to the C4 just for more modularity. Um, I liked the ability to change the locations of the weights. Um, it came with the overmolded cheek piece, which I ended up getting for my Whiskey 3, but initially it didn't have it. Um, and then this different style of weight, so there's some things I had to change. Um, basically, this has smaller weights back here that you can buy in pairs um, instead of just the big uh, bag, the weighted bag rider that basically bolts in and then you didn't really have a whole lot of give with this This one actually has the ability to adjust up and down um, And then you also have the ability to cant your recoil pad the same as the whiskey 3 uh, I will note though uh, For this one with the I'm gonna flip it over here really quick so you guys can see with the C4 this screw right here which adjusts our height up and down and adjust our tilt I won't do it right now just because you got to pull a bunch pull it apart pull a pin out it's not super complicated but just not the focus of the video um, but with that being said this screw right here prevents you from canting it this way so to the one o'clock um, because the bottom of your recoil pad will hit uh, the nut so you can get a washer just to space it out so then it'll tighten faster and give you more gap. I just have not done it yet. So it's something that I need to stop being lazy and go get one. Um, I keep saying that like I just did right now and I probably will still forget to do it when the time comes and I end up at Home Depot or you know Lowe's or something like that. Um, again, adjustable uh, spot weld cheek piece up and down. You also can unscrew um, the two attachment points in here and you can shift this forward and backwards. So if you want to be further back, further forward, or just right in the middle, all up to you. Or you can spin it and rotate it. It's configured right now because it is an angled cheek piece. Uh, for a right-handed shooter, obviously if I was a left-handed shooter, it would be digging into it. So you can flip it that way if you are a left-handed shooter. Uh, moving forward, you've got the thumb shelf built in here. So that's super nice. Uh, you can get it without. Um, I'm sorry, you can't get it without, but it also it comes built in as opposed to the Whiskey 3 where you would have to buy um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, the, gri the grips in order to widen the grips and get a thumb rest type of or thumb shelf type of setup. Uh, you also come with this basically the trigger, I'm gonna call it a trigger finger extension because I'm not really sure what it's called off the top of my head. Uh, but basically it allows you to rest the meat of your trigger finger up against it and then it'll it basically allows your finger to fall perfectly into a 90 degree angle so that you are getting 90 degrees and you're squeezing straight back or pressing straight back when you engage the trigger uh, as you're engaging targets uh, then from here I'll pull this up so we can see uh, I'm not sure how well you can see in here but there are these silver plates that are uh, screwed in here that allows you you can pull them out and, or put one in take one out or you know bend them and manipulate them based off the type of magazine you're running. So like I am running accurate mags, single stacks. Um, so this setup works perfect where it goes in. There's no mag wobble, no mag tilt, um, because this is holding into place. And then to ensure that there is no mag tilt, this piece right here with these two screws, you basically take your mag, slap it in, undo those screws while it's vertical in the, like it is now, and that, that piece will fall down and get flush with the front of the magazine. Then you tighten it back down, so when you pull it out, it's now set for this size magazine. So if you're running a different caliber, longer, shorter mags, basically, like here you have a little bit of wobble, which is necessary, right? It's not perfectly tight, um, where it's never gonna move, but you won't get such excessive wobble where if somehow something hit the magazine, it tilts forward and then you can't feed uh, your next round into the chamber. So that was a huge one for me. Also, it comes with the uh, barricade stop built in so you don't have to purchase one and then I don't have it on right now uh, it comes with the quiver also well it doesn't come with it you can buy the quiver the KRG quiver I have just grown so accustomed to the short action custom little elastic material one uh, that I chose to go with that option 
uh, because I already had a whole bunch of them, so it saved me some money. Um, from there, again, you can add weights to the front. These are the KRG, or sorry, the, the Gray Ops CNC uh, weights that I already had, but then there's plenty of options. You can bring them more forward, bring them more forward back. The Whiskey 3 had a recoil, or not a recoil, a QD attachment, like right where my finger's at. So basically, I could have a short one and a long one, or I could put everything towards the back, and it was kind of messing with the balance. So I, I didn't have as many options for double longs, or I had to have a long and a short or two shorts. Uh, it just didn't work out uh, exactly the way I wanted it, which caused the rifle to be kind of front heavy. Um, and then it comes with the ability to have a long or short um, front piece here. I can't remember the exact name of it off the top of my head. Again, sorry. Um, but it's basically the upper receiver shell. You can ha I have the long one, so it's six inches long. You can also get one that's short. You can kind of tell just by the number of screws you have in here to attach a Picatinny rail or some type of um, night optic that could screw directly into this piece. Uh, it just depends on what you want uh, and what you're looking to do with it. Uh, it also comes with internal weights. At the bottom here, um, they're actually inside, so you'd have to take the barrel out to put them in. Um, so I'm not going to show them to you, but I have two weights in there as well. Um, so basically, those are the main reasons why I chose the, the KRG C4, um, because it had all the options that we wanted for the Whiskey 3, um, basically kind of built in. So you didn't have to buy a bunch of extra pieces uh, like I did with my Whiskey 3 when, as I continued to grow and get better at shooting and realizing what I actually wanted and needed. Uh, and then I'm going with the Kelby's Atlas Tactical uh, bolt and action. So 90 degree throw, uh, nothing crazy, very standard, right? Uh, works smooth, fluted bolt, doesn't do a whole lot, it just looks cool. Um, and then I have that paired with a, a trigger tech trigger uh, set at, I'm gonna say 11 ounces I think right now, might be 13. Uh, I'm not a big fan of super light triggers, I'm just not comfortable with them. Uh, but it's got the flat shoe as opposed to the curved shoe. Uh, just what I what I prefer. You can go all the way down to I believe four ounces, but I would never do that. That's just me. Um, so I keep it right around that 11 to 13, sometimes even 16. Uh, I like to be right around a pound and a half to a pound, um, or I guess a pound to a pound and a half, uh, however you would say that correctly. Uh, and then I threw a Proof Research 26 inch con uh, competition contour barrel on it. This particular one is this, my silver one is my 6.5. I also have a 24 inch um, black barrel with the same, you know, Kelby's action uh, trigger tech trigger for 308. So I use the 308 as a trainer and I use my 6.5 for competition. Uh, current brake on here right now is the CB30 brake. Uh, I got that because it's paired with my uh, Thunder Beast Ultra 7 suppressor that I got sitting inside of my Armin Getting Gear suppressor cover. Um, just direct thread, screws right on. No, nothing crazy. Uh, I need to clean it right now, so I'm not gonna tighten that all the way down, but you know, like I said, just screws right on. Boom, once it's tight, make sure it's snug, and then you're good to go. And then uh, I've got my sound suppressor rocking and rolling. Uh, if I'm not running the CB30, um, I usually will have the Area 419 Hellfire 4 port on there uh, for competition. This last match I ran suppressed, um, so I just kept that on um, because I was training with it all the whole time um, before the match, so it just made sense to stick with what I've been training with. So, and then uh, coming back here on the bottom, just the last piece before we move up top, I have the Thunder Beast uh, bipods. Uh, super simple. I like them because you can just hit one button. They fully extend, and they have you know one latch here just to pull them up, and I don't even need to pull anything to knock them down. So. To deploy them, it is super, super simple and super efficient. Have them sitting on an ARCA clamp so it matches with the ARCA rail setup that I have on the bottom of the KRG. Uh, and then I also have SkyPod double pulls uh, in the event that I'm shooting somewhere with really tall grass or I need to get a weird angle um, and two engaged targets. So I bring both of these with me when I go to matches and then I just swap back and forth as needed. I keep one with rubber feet, one with spike feet. Uh, so again, if I have to shoot on top of a prop, that I need the rubber to help kind of uh, dampen the bounce. And then I have the spike feet in case I need to just dig it in and uh, keep it from moving. I do have um, 
the extensions and the spike feet for the Thunder Beast, but I don't usually use them as much because once you start clicking more pieces together, there's mechanical wobble. So I usually end up just pulling out the, the double pulls and just rocking those because they already give me more height. As you can see, just naturally, the legs are longer. Uh, and then obviously you've got the full length like I just pulled out earlier. So work out super well. I do like these as well. They give you a little bit more options as far as uh, placement, right? So you've got your standard, you've got your close, and then you've got your super far. So if I wanted to get, you know, I wanted some height, but I also want some stability. And depending on where I was at, I, I could prop these into two different, you know, vertical objects in order to brace them in. I will do so. Um, or for some random reason, I couldn't tell you right now off the top of my head, I needed some weird setup like this um, to in, or, in order to get stable and get level. Uh, but it just gives you a wealth of more options than the Thunder Beasts do. But the Thunder Beasts are the tried and true ones that I go with for the most part because nine times out of ten, that's the height that I need. And they're super easy to deploy. And I don't have to worry about fidgeting with them when I'm on the clock. Um, now moving up top, I've got my spur mount with my Kales 525i. Uh, not the newest model, but it is the model that I have and I super enjoy it. Um, it has the left-handed windage, which I'm still getting used to. Have made a couple mistakes on the clock. Uh, pulling right instead of pushing right and pulling left instead of pushing left uh, type of scenarios where I need to go two tenths and I went the wrong direction. Still getting used to it. Uh, obviously, when I, you're, you've spent your whole life with pull right, push left, on the right hand side, it's bound to happen a couple times. Um, it's got the parallax, oh, sorry, I guess I should have kept it up here, huh? And then it's got the parallax ring up here on top. I have the extended parallax ring on there just so I can get better purchase and move all the way to whatever uh, parallax thing that I need. Um, what I really like about this scope too is that for the most part, I can run this literally like just like that where the 500 at six o'clock coming back towards my eye. And that works basically for 95% of targets as long as uh, lighting conditions and uh, temperature conditions are, you know, working with me there. Um, every once in a while I'll have to fiddle with it. Unless I'm zeroing, obviously I'll go to 100. But basically a 100 and 500 is, is like almost perfect for every, every scenario that I need uh, in the competition scene. It also comes with illuminated reticle. Uh, I don't use it obviously because I'm not shooting anything at night, but it does have that option in the event that I needed it. Uh, and then I run the fat... Fat line, sorry. The flat line ops levels. I've got one on each side. I know a lot of people asked me about that recently on some of my other YouTube videos or Instagram videos. Uh, I run the normal one up as far forward on the left-hand side for my non-dominant eye. That's not in the scope to see to confirm level. The spur mount comes with the level back here, but because it's below the scope, I have to move my head to see it. So I like having this one up here and up front where I can see it over here. If it's too close, sometimes... I've noticed that when it's super close on the on the left hand side, when I open my eye because it's been closed for whatever reason, when I'm focused on everything, it gets kind of blurry and it just takes a little bit of time for me to uh, get the blur out by blinking and stuff to be able to make sure that this bubble is level. Uh, unfortunately, that means that this one has to be close on the right hand side because I don't have anywhere to put it up here on the front. Uh, but this is also not a primary bubble for me. It is mainly if I ever had to shoot offhand, some stages require you to do that. Um, just the way the match director set it up. So I have a secondary bubble here for my, what will become my non-shooting eye uh, to, to get eyes on and make sure that everything is level. Because I will say with having the overmolded cheek piece and having it configured on the right hand configuration, it does get kind of tricky um, to get behind the gun properly and make sure it's level and get proper eye relief and be able to see everything. Uh, so that's just another quick Double check, make sure everything is good, that I'm not super crazy as I'm trying to figure out my life with my left hand and my left eye. Uh, that's basically the gun in a nutshell. Um, to be honest, overall, uh, besides modularity, I'm not saying any of these parts are better than any other uh, chassis system, barrel system, trigger, optic. Uh, I just am a fanboy of these products, to be honest. I've had Bartline barrels, they work great, no difference. Uh, a lot of my buddies were in Criterion barrels. No difference as far as you know performance. This isn't outperforming them. There's not outperforming this one. I've just always been uh, a proof fanboy. When I bought my first proof barrel, I was my very first aftermarket barrel, and it worked great, so I kept doing it. Um, I got the Whiskey 3. I loved it, so I made sense just to get another KRG chassis uh, and one that had more options for me. 
the first time I got onto a very, very high quality scope and glass that wasn't uh, in the military, like the Night Force or the Schmidt and Benders, was a Kalez. Uh, and I got a great deal on this one from a guy who had an extra one. Uh, I won't tell you the price because people will get super crazy. Um, but we'll, we'll say that I got it for much cheaper than, you know, MSRP. And that was a great bonus for me because I would have bought one at MSRP if I had to because uh, I was in the market at the time. So, again, overall, these are the p parts that I have. This is what rifle I, I chose and set up. These, those are kind of the reasons why. Nothing super crazy. Uh, moving on to some other accoutrements that I use. Obviously, uh, I use the Accurate Mags with the two-round extender. I think for the price, these mags are super awesome. I love that the feed lips are a little bit shorter. Uh, I was having issues with my Whiskey 3 um, when I was feeding the mags in that they were having trouble just grinding into the feed throat and the feed ramp trying to get into the chamber. Um, so when I got these mags, all of a sudden that went away and everything was super working out super well. So I've just stuck with them. I've bought two of them and I have not looked back since. Uh, I am looking to pick up, oh, wrong direction, sorry. I am looking to pick up two AW mags just because this gun has the ability obviously to feed them. Um, and that will give me some magazine clearance as you know, you get on props with like boulders or, you know, tr uh, truck beds or, you know, the big ass tires where the mag's now hitting. So you have to kind of slide back and then you, you're increasing wobble zone vertically. Uh, I think that that would be the only update I have for mags is having some of those shorter double stack mags that can still hold 10 rounds. Um, will help increase my ability to get into a position faster and not have to fight the prop, not so much the weapon system itself. Um, then obviously standard using a Kestrel um, for all my data because it obviously, who doesn't use a Kestrel for their data? Again, I also have my phone, but again, this doesn't require me to have any type of cell phone service or anything like that. And I can literally just pull it out of my pocket, do my thing, write my dope cards down on my arm board and then put it back in my pocket and I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, and then I've got the Area 419 X-Rail uh, large uh, in case I need some, t you know, throw that on there in case I need a little bit more balance if I have some kind of a weird prop that requires me to have a little bit more weight to sink into the bag and just get level and flush. Uh, I don't use it very often. I would say I average maybe three to five stages total that while I'll, I'll run the run the plate, uh, but it just slaps right on there because it's got the Arca clamp. And I said, again, it's got the Arca rail down here. Uh, so it's a very quick attachment and then I can rock and roll and then when I need to take it off, spin it off, throw it back in the bag, I'm ready to, I'm ready to move on to the next stage. Um, sorry, bringing it back to the scope. Uh, this is the SKMR4 reticle. I really like that reticle um, because it's got the open um, dot in the middle for you to be able to get a re refined aiming point. And then it uses 0.2 mil increments for all of its um, stadia lines or hash marks on the stadia lines. Uh, so again, I've always kind of used those. I know some guys have been getting into the 0.25s with the Leopolds, um, but I, in my brain, do math in increments of two because I've been doing it for so long. Um, so I haven't started messing with the 0.25s yet. Uh, I do intend to, but for right now, this reticle with this style of Christmas tree is not super busy. It's got the increments that I'm used to, and it's got a good refined aiming point. And with the five to 25, I have the ability to basically run this at 18 power 99% of the time and I can see everything I need to see and I can see misses, see impacts, I can see wind, I can see mirage and I'm able to engage targets with a crisp, clear line of sight coming from the, the top quality glass and the amount of light that comes in and gets to my eye. Uh, I will say that this is, uh, once you get it down past, once you get past 20, the eye box gets a little bit finicky. Uh, it's a little bit tight, it's not very forgiving, kind of like the night forces. Um, but when you're running it sub, 20 power the eye box was super super um not super super forgiving but it's super easy to get into the eye box and stay in the eye box and i have no issues with it i mean other than that you know i got my cool little krg sticker because i had one i need to put it somewhere so i slapped it on the scope my proof sticker just so everyone knows that my proof barrel is proof barrel uh, mainly just because i wanted to do it uh, and i got some krg stickers on my mags because i have a bunch of krg stuff so they always send stickers and i had to use them um the only thing I would say that I would change, honestly, on this rifle right now uh, is I want to get the barrel black just because I like everything to look the same. I'm not a big fan of the silver barrels. That's just probably the military and me being like, oh, it's too much shine. Um, and then I am looking at getting an American Rifle Company coup de gras action, which will be uh, I'm going to get an action, a trigger, and a whole nother barrel. 
And what's going to basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the Hellfire break on that one. And then I'm going to keep the CB30 break with the suppressor combo on this one. Um, again, because the simplicity of this rifle system, two action screws, six screws on the shroud here that comes up. This comes right out. I could drop the next one back in, th tighten those action screws back down, throw the shroud back on, tighten the six screws. And then I've got a whole new, not a whole new rifle, but I've got a whole new barrel set up and I can run with a break as opposed to the uh, suppressor. I only have one scope right now. So again, the, the nice thing about this setup, right, is having the sperm out with the unit mount. I can unscrew it, slap, slap it off or take it off and then slap it on the next, the next setup, uh, which is also what I do with my 308 configuration. Although it is sitting in my whiskey three right now, it's more of just a storage um, container. And so I'll just pull this out, throw my 308 in there, tighten it down, throw the scope on, you know, with 10, 15 rounds later, it's chronoed and zeroed. And then I'm ready to rock and roll and train. Um, I like to train with the 308 just because of the wind. It gives me a much better um, ability to challenge myself with the wind because it's affected so much more by the wind. Uh, and then I like to run the 6.5 for competition because I'm trying to eliminate all the variables that I can uh, to make up for my silly mistakes. Like I said earlier, dialing wind the wrong way. So even though wind doesn't affect the bullet as much when you dial it the wrong way, obviously it totally doesn't work out the way you want it to. Um, but all right, guys, like I said, that's basically my rifle in a nutshell. Uh, again, KRG, Collis, Spur, Trigger Tech, Kelby's, Proof, Thunder Beast, Thunder Beast, uh, and then Accurate Mags. And the MT MDT Skypod backup um, double pulls. So if you guys got any questions, hit me up, let me know. Um, and realistically, other than that, I'll do another video when I get the new barrel action and trigger set up. Um, just to show the differences and why I got it. A lot of it was the throw. The 90 degree throw is a little excessive. Uh, the bolt, it runs great. I just prefer to have a, a shorter throw, you know, shave a couple tenths of a second off for, um, for being under the clock. And then uh, I'm also gonna hit up some other videos as new gear shows up. I'm just testing some new things out. But this is my primary, a go-to that I run 99% of the time, uh, other than, you know, swapping out the barrel for 308 for training. So, all right, catch you guys later.